Hi, today's good person to know is Dr. Mark Williamson. He's Director for Action for Happiness, a movement for positive social change. Mark wants to create a society that puts people's overall happiness first. Their aim is to inspire people to get in touch with what really matters to them. In this video, Mark discovers what it means to be happy and identified five themes. Wonder, gratitude, hope, love and change. Please take a moment to jot down what each means to you and see if you can bring some, if not more, happiness in your life. I hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching. Yeah, we're going to particularly focus on this evening is this idea of paying attention. Because it's actually in many ways our attention is the most powerful asset any of us have. The fabulous Richard Burnett, I don't know if anyone here knows Richard, but he is behind one of the people behind the Mindfulness in Schools project. Come to join me in this little exercise. So three, two, one, then we're going to clap together. One, two, three, and then hold our hands up high. Three, two, one. Without now necessarily looking at your hands, just place your attention into your hands and notice what you what you sense. Okay, now let's sort of play with our attention a little bit. Now try to zoom your attention in specifically to your thumbs. And now let's try even more precisely. Zoom your attention in to the very top of your left little finger. A very simple exercise, a mindfulness exercise if you like, but also just a, a chance to notice this faculty we have of attention. And so often we are living in this mode of thinking and analysing and rushing and doing the next thing and actually very often we're not necessarily in that mode of just tuning in. Paying attention isn't just a fundamental skill of mindfulness and of course as many of you who, who know about mindfulness know it's about being non-judgmental, it's about accepting in many ways whatever we find uh, in ourselves and in the world around us. Mindfulness is the, is the starting point for the decisions that we make in our lives. So actually, how we pay attention gives us an amazing amount of choice over what we actually do. Then we're looking at five ways that we can choose to use our attention. Opportunity to explore more of the wonder in the world, in the world around us. Caused by something beautiful, remarkable or unfamiliar. In the modern world we are so often at risk of just not noticing all the incredible things around us. We're so often caught up in these devices we hold in front of us. He who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe is as good as dead. His eyes are closed. So think about today, this week, recently, what have you noticed that's actually maybe taking your breath away in some way? Gratitude, which referred to as the quality of being thankful or readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. We, we are wired to focus on what might go wrong, to be, you know, sort of remembering what we did wrong. We're very, very good at noticing the problems and having this bias towards the negative. It's a vital skill, but it's not always essential nor indeed helpful. In fact, we, we almost need to consciously overcome this negativity bias by choosing to focus also on the things that are good. Certainly as I've gone through my life, the more I've looked at those little things and realised that they are actually indeed perhaps some of the most important things. Second theme is what are you thankful for? Subtly different to what you've noticed that's wonderful, maybe more to do with people, maybe more to do with things that have happened. And this could be a very big thing. It could be a major work achievement. It could be a huge family celebration. Or it could be a tiny thing. It could be a smile on the way to work. So what, are you, what are you thankful for right now? Today, this week, in general. Hope, another word that needs no introduction, but it's described as a feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. So how is it possible to feel hopeful in a world where things are far from perfect. We face loss and tragedy and disappointment and failure and all these things that are part of the human condition. There are always things to hope for, whatever situation we're in. I like this quote by Joseph Addison who says, three essentials for happiness in this life are something to do, something to love, sort of both of which we've touched on already, and something to hope for. And I think it's so vital that whatever is going on in our lives, we manage to find, again with this choice actually, to choose to notice what we're looking forward to as much as what we're we're worried about. What are you looking forward to this week? What are you looking forward to this year? What are you looking forward to in general? What are you excited about? And often, of course, with love, we're thinking about sort of um, loving relationships and romantic relationships often, but of course, love is, is broader than that. And, and why in the context of this evening is this important? Well, it's so easy to hate. It's so easy in this world that we've just talked about being full of many problems to see 
opportunities to hate, to see things that we want to criticize, to see people whose behavior we think is wrong and awful and terrible. In many ways, empathy is the antidote to hate. The more we can understand people's positions, the more we can understand why they may do the things that they do. But in a world that is increasingly seems to be full of hateful comments, found that if you love life, life will love you back. There's something about, you know, we, almost what we, what we look for is, to some extent, what we, what we find and what we get back. Who or what do you, do you really love? What really gives you that sense of um, affection, caring, really that, you know, that sense of, I, lo I love that. And the word change, very well known, but an actual process through which something becomes different. We wish that we could change so much of what's wrong. We often wish we could change a lot about our own situation as well. But we can't necessarily change everything. And yet there is always something that we can do. Serenity prayer that many of you will know the words of, which I think are very powerful again. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Think of this in a very personal way, or you can think of this more broadly in terms of big issues you care about, wider problems in society. What change will you make, or in particular, what positive change will you make? So what can you do to make a difference for yourself, for your family, for your friends, for your community, for your workplace, for a big social issue, whatever it might be?